Hi friends, this is Lady Flora, and if you're new to this channel, I am a homeschooling working mom of three, Songbird who is seven years old, Man Cub who is four years old, and Baby Professor who is one years old. And if you like homeschooling videos and book hauls and curriculum reviews, then you should subscribe because we do a lot of that on this channel. So today I want to talk about our poetry book collection. I really enjoy reading poetry with my children and uh, I hope that I can get some more poetry books in the future, but at the moment this is what we have and I'm excited to share it with you. So I'm going to start with this one, a child's book of poems by Gyo Fujikawa. I confess I bought this based on the reviews on Amazon. Everybody said the illustrations were so beautiful. A lot of people talked about um, about growing up with this book and that they had really fond memories of reading the poetry in here. The full page spreads. Um, there's plenty of things in here that you could use for um, unit studies. This is my favorite poem that's in here. It's, um, it's by William Wordsworth, and I love it so much that I think I need to get a book by William Wordsworth. Honestly, before I started homeschooling, I thought there was only one poetry book for children and that it was called Where the Sidewalk Ends. I had no idea there were so many other amazing books of poetry for children, and um, I'm really excited to explore them. I heard about this author, Jack Perlutsky from another homeschool YouTuber, and this book is called Behold the Bold Umbrellaphant. And all the poems in here are wonderful plays on words, the bizarre alarmadillos, the clocktopus. There's some really, really great poems in here. And another thing that's really great about this is that it uses collage to, to tell, to illustrate the poem. Emerging from the salty sea, a wondrous beast appears. It clearly is a clocktopus. We marvel as it nears. It moves with slow precision at a never-changing pace. Its tentacles in tempo with the clock upon its face. How cool is that? I have another one by Jack Perlutsky. It's called Stardine Swim High Across the Sky. I like this one. Plandas. Plandas sit around all day, planning what to do. Their plans amount to nothing, for they never see them through. They plan to run a marathon or take a railroad trip. They plan to cross the ocean on a wooden sailing ship. So yeah, this is a really great book. I really like Jack Perletsky. Um, more of the collage style in this book as well, um, which is great because you can do a collage project and use some of these illustrations um, for inspiration. This book is called Sea Star Wishes and I got this book when we did a sea life unit study. There's a lot of really great poems in here about sea urchin, um, about starfish, obviously, geoduck. I mean, how cool, like you could, I don't even know what a geoduck is and I live in Florida. It seems kind of specifically about the Pacific coast, the West coast. So uh, we live on the East coast and it would be really cool to get a poetry book about the East Coast, uh, specifically about Florida. That would be awesome because um, we have a unique kind of ecosystem that surrounds us. But this is an awesome book um, and I recommend it. It's so fun to have uh, poetry to go with whatever it is you're studying about. You can really switch up your your thinking process. You go from learning facts to kind of playing with the information by reading poetry about what you're studying. Another really great book that I actually don't have, uh, but I got it from the library and I found it to be totally delightful. It's called the, um, uh, what's it called again? It's called The Song of the Water Boatman and it's all poems about pond life. And it's really great. The water boatman is, a, is an insect that lives on top of the surface of the water and glides by using his legs. It's got poems in there about ducks and even water bears, which is fascinating because they're microscopic creatures. But I really loved that book. Uh, we got it for a pond unit study and 
Um, I didn't expect very much of it, and my daughter wound up loving it and rereading it, and we kept coming back to it. And so it's a really good book, and I recommend it. I'll put the link in the description box below. Now, this book I got, and I was actually a little bit disappointed with it. Um, however, my daughter loves it, so we're going to hold on to it. Uh, I got it on Amazon Used, and it has um, poems and prayers in here. Some of them are Bible verses, and so it'll have the reference to the Bible verse. But some of them just don't have any attribution at all, and and I wish it did. So, but yeah, we'll probably be holding on to this one for a little bit longer because it's very beloved. This was actually my copy when I was little, and I've had it for a long time, and it was even old. Um, when it was given to me, it's got an inscription that says, Merry Christmas, Margaret Elizabeth from Papa and Mama, and I don't know who that is, 1948. So I love that. It's it's a really beautiful vintage book, and uh, it's in good condition, and it has beautiful, beautiful, like, turn-of-the-century Art Nouveau style illustrations that I just adore. Really great poetry, really lively, fun and cheerful poems. The world is so full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. That's a good one. There are a few poems in here that are a bit dated. Uh, this poem is called Foreign Lands and it's not exactly how I would want my daughter to see foreign lands. So there are a couple poems in here that are just older, so you can kind of skip past them if maybe you don't like the language. So always just read it before so you make sure you know what it says and you like it. Now We Are Six by A.A. A. Milne, um, who is the author of Winnie the Pooh. And there are poems in here about Winnie the Pooh but not all of them. And some of it might go over your kid's head. Some of it is kind of like, you know how there are books that look like they're for kids, but they're really for adults to remember what it was like being a kid. Some of the poems are like that, um, but mostly they're just really sweet, really innocent, really fun. This one is great, it's called The Friend. There are lots and lots of people who are always asking things like dates and pounds and ounces and the names of funny kings. And the answer is either sixpence or a hundred inches long. And they know they'll think me silly if I get the answer wrong. No, we won't. So Pooh and I go whispering and Pooh looks very bright and says, well, I say sixpence, but I don't suppose I'm right. And then it doesn't matter what the answer ought to be because if he's right, I'm right. And if he's wrong, it isn't me. I love this poem because um, my daughter does that sometimes during lessons, I'll say, what's the answer? And she'll have her little stuffed animal tell me the answer. And I imagine in her head that she's saying, if the stuffed animal gets it wrong, then it's not me, it's the animal that's getting it wrong. I love incorporating poetry into our homeschool. I love just randomly reading it out loud. And I notice that the children always sort of quiet when they hear me reading a poem and they get curious and interested and they listen. And I'm curious to hear what your favorite poetry books are. And please put them in the comments below because I would love to hear uh, what some of your favorite poems are or what poetry books do you recommend because I am looking for some more. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your children. Go outside and have a sublime day.